my my first question for you is after a long career as a spring rider why did you decide to to start your um, with your fi- with your first feature film with a romantic comedy set in the world of cooking Uh, well, uh, I've been a, I've been a, a, a film worker for many many years, like o- over yeah. 30 years, and uh, and uh, like the message in my film is it's never too late. And then, of course, uh, when I I got this idea of making this film uh, 15 almost 20 years ago, uh, okay. because I the film is about my favorite subject, uh, food of course, uh, love and passion and also friendship uh, between women because they're always yeah. on, on film, always women should always will fight about men and I didn't want that to happen in my film uh, <laughs> because that's so boring. Uh, so I wanted the women to be like uh, mature and filled with uh, life and because I love food and I, I always love watching films with food uh, that's why I thought also it would be a really good way of telling a good story uh, like uh, food can express so many feelings absolutely yeah so that's why I don't know if that's the answer of your question but I'm just talking yes about absolutely absolutely yeah it is clear that your that, that your film is part of a long tradition of movies set in kitchen so i was also curious to ask you which were your main references and what do you think that makes your your movie different from others belonging to this um, field of kitchen films? Uh, what was the question? I didn't get that. Well, I was curious to know which were your models uh, uh, for your story. And also, in which way do you think that your movie is different from other belonging of the long of the long list of uh, movies set in kitchens? Well, the the model that was me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was a role model for this film. Uh, no, actually, uh, Ang Lee's uh, what the name of it? Man eat pray. Women eat man woman. I don't remember it now. That's my favorite film. Uh, and also, um, yeah, well, all, all films where they make food. I, I don't have the names right now. I'm so okay. uh, I'm sorry for that. But uh, I, I wanted to make uh, like a, um, an like a, a feel good film, but also a serious feel good film. I didn't want to have like laughs like this. Of course, <laughs> maybe somewhere there is uh, a little bit. Uh, Maybe my producers wanted to have more, but for me, it was very, very important that uh, a feel-good movie is also uh, something that you can feel and you can also like almost have tears and you can actually think about and then you, suddenly you, you laugh again. And I think you laugh because you recognize it. Uh, you can you recognize all the different uh, like when she turns 40 and she started to cry the daughter Frederica yes. like oh my god what's wrong with you like are you going to die <laughs> or no I'm turning 40 I mean so many they that's like a joke that it's not like oh my god that's it's a, f- a fantastic joke but so many laughs about it because yes. they can relate to it and Absolutely. I think a, a good film uh with humor, you have to take it seriously uh, because everyone can relate to, because life is more often a little bit weirder than a film. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's true, absolutely. So you also said that before, and it is clear that in the movie, friendship has a fundamental role, and maybe it's even more relevant uh, than the love story itself in your movie. Do you agree with that? And which are the reasons behind this choice? Uh, yes, I totally agree. Uh, it was, uh, like I've said before, it was many, uh, many. Uh, the, w- the people with money, uh, of course, I love them because otherwise <laughs> they made the, the film. But they also have strong opinions and they wanted to this to be to end up, many of them, not all of them, many of them wanted this film to end up with a kiss. Uh, when uh, Peter Stormer, when he comes back and like, oh, mm. and I was like, ah, no, no way. This not this film is not about that because Karin, 
about Erika or so on. She's been taking care of the whole family. Uh, she's been picking up her his dirty socks on the floor. She will not do that any more. Not even for a new man. So I don't. I think like yes. They are like working together, and the friendship is stronger because uh, when I mean when you are in in uh, when you are in between when you have love sorrows, then you always have your friends. Mm-hmm. If one like uh, that's so friendship is more friendship and love with friends. It's more uh, important, I think, because you always have your friends. Lover can go and come. <laughs> Absolutely, and do you think that is a different the friendship between women? And the friendship between yeah, them. I think it's uh, yes. Well, I wish, I wish. Maybe my next film will be a friendship with, with uh, men because you never see that. Uh, yes. I wanted to make a film uh, with uh, like old friends uh, getting together again, and uh, they're not uh, they're not trying to get the sa- same man, man. They're not trying to. Like they're not arguing, they're arguing, of course, like you always do. But it's not like uh, they are uh, mean to each other, and uh, it's not about. They never talk about like there is one line because, of course, they talk about men, and there is one line that was so important to me. And she say, I think uh, Pia says, "Can we stop talking about men?" <laughs> <laughs> and that, uh, and we all was laughing so much because sometimes. Like you're stuck into talking about men, and like, haven't we haven't we more interesting subjects to discuss? <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> okay, so uh, I particularly appreciated the soundtrack of your movie from Charles Navour to Marvin Gaye. So, uh, if if you can tell us something about how did you work on the soundtrack because that's super amazing. Yeah, the soundtrack was uh, very interesting. Uh, I have a, 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 a Finnish composer okay. uh, and uh, I've never met him and it was during COVID time. So uh, we never met personally and that was very important to me. Uh, but we immediately understood each other and I sent some scenes for him that we just cut together very roughly. And he came up with the good ideas. I mean, immediately we we like set the tone, and uh, and uh, he all he's he he's like a classic musician. But also we wanted to have like a bigger soundtrack. Like it's a bigger movie. It's not like a small movie. It's a big movie. Uh, like we are in Italy now. That's good. <laughs> uh, and and of course uh, the soundtrack with Marvin Gaye. That's my favorite song. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to have it. It's a, like a love tribute to my my big love in life. <laughs> Absolutely. So my my last question for you is about the Scandinavian cinema in general at present, because it seems that after these movies such as Another Round or The Worst Person in the World and Triangle of Sadness that were widely appreciated abroad and in the main film festivals. So do you think that from your perspective, this is a flourishing moment for the Scandinavian cinema? Yeah, always. I mean, <laughs> we are, uh, we've been fighting for a long time now. We have a, a lot of uh, good uh, directors, female, but still there are more men that get money to make yeah. uh, films. That's the fact. Uh, but we have a lot of, um, I mean, Thomas Winterberg, Another Round is a really good movie. I worked with Thomas uh, a yeah. couple of times. <laughs> And uh, and I normally jo- I normally say tell him like when I see him on a party it's like well maybe you should you have one character female character in your next next film <laughs> like um, well I don't know what was the question I, I forgot it no if you think that this is a particular flourishing moment for the Scandinavian cinema abroad um, yes. I hope so. I mean, um, it's a long time since Emma Bergman made it all the way. <laughs> uh, and of course, now with Ruben Östlund, uh, I think it's really nice because he's uh, uh, he's also from Gothenburg. I, I, I shot my film in Gothenburg and I saw him when we were shooting. He was sitting in the hairdresser. <laughs> we were shooting a place and I said, oh, hello. And he... Uh, <laughs> But he also makes movies that are a little bit ironic and uh, with some um, 
uh, I think it's, I think the world is ready for, uh, for some laps, even if it's really hard, because it's really hard times now. I mean, I love watching, and also when I write scripts, it's always so dark, <laughs> and <laughs> no one wants to finance it. Uh, and of course, uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a new time for Swedish uh, films going out in the world. Uh, it's been um, Denmark's having um, a long tradition now uh, being out in the world, but the Swedish film tradition, yeah, we have uh, more very good female uh, directors coming also. <laughs> Thank you. That's super amazing. Yeah. So it was my pleasure. Thank you for your time. No problem. It's nice talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Bye. Ciao.